welcome to The Lowdown, brought to you by Unibet. I'm Dev Sonny, and joining me today is the unbeaten super bantamweight sensation, the IBO world champion, Mr. Liam Davis. How are you, sir? Yeah, I'm a lot better now. First first uh, week back in the gym, so I'm a lot happier. What happened? We were all looking forward to this Shabazz Masood fight. My understanding is it's still going to happen, but just not when we thought. What's going on, Liam? Yeah, so um, I went to Italy. I was sparring. Everything was going well. Done a weekend sparring. I come back. Just picked up a virus. For after a week, oh, I'll be all right. And it just went on. Um, went after about nine days. I thought something ain't right. Went to the hospital. And uh, yeah, they put me on antibiotics, said that I need to rest and recover. And um, it just put me too behind with the training. I missed too many weeks of not training. Do you know how I, I want to come out there and look good and this frustrating decision to make, but it was one that we had to make. And um, yeah, I'm just glad it's been put back. I've done probably, in my head, I've done Shabazz a favour. He gets a little run out fight. I begged George to make it so uneasy so it looks good. And then uh, he's got the big dog just waiting on a, tea, on a date now. So I'm in the gym waiting for it. So you'll be there on on the uh, on July the uh, the twentieth in Birmingham. You'll be there. I know your brother's on the show as well. So you'll be watching Shabazz. Yeah, of course. I'm mainly going to watch my brother, of course, Big Bad Brad. He's uh, looking good in the gym. Been just done a bit with him now. So excited for him to come back and put on a show. And then yeah, hopefully sit there. My fingers crossed that Shabazz looks a million dollars. And uh, I'd like him to get a good knockout of the first combination. Like, look, 10-10 because um, his last fight wasn't great. So I wish him all the best in this. Hope he looks good. And then, unfortunately, he's got me. It's a strange position for you to be in because you've gone from on that date wanting to destroy him to now on that date really wanting him to win and cheering him on from ringside. What a weird place to be. Yeah, it's crazy. Life, life works in weird ways, man. I, I was honestly, I was proper devastated about the fight. As time's gone, I'm sort of like it is what it is. Nothing I can do, but it was proper downing. Do you know what I mean? Especially, I've been Tenerife training. I've took my team Italy, put the work in. I was doing my nutrition. Everything was good and. It just wasn't meant to be. That date wasn't meant to be. So all I can do now is look forward to the new date. But, yeah, I'm super excited. I was hoping um, I could have three fights this year. But looks like I'm going to be two fights, two knockouts again by the end of the year like last. So I'll take it. When you do see Shabazz Masood in the ring, how determined are you to do a job on him? Oh, yeah. This is me or them, innit? And... Um, I've give my missus, my family hope that I'm going to do big things in it now because we're so close. So I'm going to be a dangerous man to be in the ring with. And um, Shabazz is good. All these boxers are good, aren't they? But I've been and done it. They've got to do it. Do you know what I mean? I've shown what I'm about. Uh, your man who I just beat knocked out two rounds back over Japan, sparring a new age. Do you know what I mean? So... I open it a new way is about me, a big performance, and uh, I'm going to pack my bags for Japan, hopefully. What did you think of his fight with Lewis Neri? For, for a moment there, he looked like he was in a bit of trouble. Yeah, I don't think he got caught like he, he was hurt too much, but um, he, got, he, he leaves his chin up and he gets caught, and like I've said to anyone that's asked me about it, no way, I'll bet every dime I got. That that Lewis Nere done it as hard as me. So um, you don't want Liam Dangerous Davis, the Donna Donington, catching him, as you'd say. <laughs> That's the last thing he wants. That's the last thing anyone wants. But he loves it, and I love it. Do you know what I love most? Like and Nere catches him, and he bangs his feet and bangs his gloves, and Nere didn't do much. And I just see myself in there saying, come on, let's go. Do you know what I mean? So I just showed... I, to be honest, to me, just put it into reality, like, wow, like, I think he showed he's hitable, and um, I don't think any of them hit as hard as myself, to be honest. 
So what happens if you hit Shabazz Masood uh, as hard as you can when you do finally meet him? What's the kind of confidence that you've got heading into your fight with him? Oh, yeah, I, I will stop him, Shabazz. I will stop. I think all he can do, all he can try and do is outbox me. And uh, I keep hearing people say that I'm struggling with the weight. Fucking hell, I've always struggled with the weight, but I've always made it. Do you know what I mean? So it's trying to click on and hold on to things to grab confidence from, but like I say, he's a good boxer. I'm a good boxer, but I hit hard and um, he don't seem very strong. And to, being as real as I can be, I'm quite a nasty fucker when I'm in there. I have a chip go in there with a chip on my shoulder and um, I think it's going to be too much for Shabazz. I gen generally, I know everyone says that, but I generally do believe it. Like, I can't see how he beats me. I just can't see it. It just feels like all this kind of Inoue chat, actually, should you come through Shabazz Masood and do a real job on him, it starts to become more and more realistic. It doesn't feel like there's a whole host of super bantamweights for him to fight that will actually challenge him. You sat there as an unbeaten IBO world champion who's knocking people out for fun. Surely before long, that phone rings. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. And I told Frank and George I'm ready if ever comes. Like I say, if it, the contract comes and the million dollar sign, I'm signing it. Do you know what I mean? No problem. But now I generally believe that I can, I, I go in there with everything to gain and nothing to lose. That's how I feel now. Like an IBO ain't a proper world title in that. But I've, I've done, I've been British, English, British, European, and thing, you know. Now I'm just out to be a savage and entertain because whatever happens from now is just a bonus. Do you know what I mean? Hundred percent. Listen, a couple of things just away from you quickly. I know you haven't got long. Um, your brother Bradley Thompson is on the show as well. You'll be uh, you'll be there cheering him on as well. Just give us uh, for for anyone who doesn't know anything about Bradley Thompson, give us a little sell. The Brad is is the best boxer from our area. Better than me. I'm second. Brad is the best. He's um, won so many national titles. Lost in the final. The only person I ever really beat him is McCann. And uh, that just shows he's a good level. He's 4-0 as a pro. In his third fight, he had his, his shoulder popped out. He carried on the fight and won with one arm. So he's tough as they come. He's a Donaton boy, so he don't get bet. And um, he's got a bag full of skills. I'm really excited to see him. And I keep telling this to everyone at Queensbury, like yourselves, and on all these interviews. And uh, I've told him now he's got to back, back it up because... One, he's my brother now, and uh, we don't do losing, so he knows the score. He's putting it in, and I think next year you're going to see him with belts. We, as, like I say, we myself, we ain't one of these to go 10-0 and 0 and build up, build up and get to – we're here to win belts, collect checks, and uh, punch people's heads in. So I'm looking forward to it, and that's what I expect on 20th of July for Brad. Expect a savage, nasty, spiteful performance. Okay, well, we look forward to that. Look, and uh, speaking of those sorts of performances, at the launch press conference, there was a, a double table, right? And on the first table, there was a man that you're familiar with, Andrew Kane, and he had something to say. He said, well, I've beaten both Liam Davis and Shabazz Masood in the amateurs. What, what did you think when it, when he kind of piped up like that? And, and what, what, what chance did you give him against Ash Lane? Give us your thoughts on that. Yeah, I didn't really think too much of it, to be honest. Just a bit of banter in it. He got me. But after it, when people said it, I, I thought to myself, I should have got him back and said, yeah, but I beat Baluta. <laughs> That's what I should have said. But I wasn't that quick off the mark. Um, I think Ashley Lane's going to struggle the first couple of rounds. He seems to be um, going happy the first three or four rounds, Andrew. And uh, if he can catch Lane, I think it could be over early, yeah. But then there's the other side of the script of where he's seen him tire. And uh, after six rounds, he's not the power dies down a bit, as we've seen in the Bluter fight. So it's just a question of if Ashley Lane can take in there. Do I believe so? I'm not sure. If I was had to pick a winner, I'd probably say Kane early, but... Won't be surprised if it um, 
goes the distance because Ashley Lane seems to be game and uh, in good form at the minute. So wish them both all the best. The British title's a big belt to have. I had the pleasure of picking it up once myself. And, um, yeah, wish them all the best. All, all the Queensbury lads, I wish Shabazz Masood the best. I don't wish negative on no one. Wish them all good luck, but don't give a fuck about any of them. I'm doing my own thing. <laughs> all right, look, f- f- final one then. Just uh, because y- your names have been mentioned together before, mainly by me, but Nick Ball is now a world champion. Um, that was something that we spoke about before. Maybe uh, a future fight with you and him at Featherweight. You must have been pleased for him to become a world champion. Oh, yeah, of course I was. You, you got to always support your Brit. Thought he was unlucky in the Vargas fight. Thought he was really unlucky. And he'd done the business in the last one in a tougher fight than Vargas, I thought. So, yeah, congratulations to him, a world champion. And definitely something I'd be interested in, for sure. Because, like I say, the IBO ain't a thing, but I'd be a two-weight world champion. Um, and definitely something I believe I can do. But just got to knock, knock this uh, Shabazz out of the way. And then these are big options, isn't they, that I got? in new way, Nick Ball... Whoever else, I'd go up with Kakachi, any anything. I'm I'm struggling Kikachi. at Superman. I'm Kakachi's massive. Kakachi, you, you sure? Kakachi. Super feather to Superman. Um, definitely, I can rock with any of them. Oh, that's not quite, that's that's not for the names like Nick Ball or Kakachi. I'm just saying the belts. To me, they seem very possible, and uh, I will be moving up and setting my eyes on them very soon. I love it. Well, listen, Liam, best of luck. You're back in camp now. Get yourself sorted out and uh, we can't wait for the new date to drop and uh, for you and Shabazz Masood to finally meet. Best of luck in camp to you. Yeah, thank you. See you uh, on the 20th. We'll see you there. Cheers, mate.